All right. All right, everybody. How is it going out there? Thank you guys to everybody that was already here, already super interactive. We see the chat is blowing up. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, man, this is going to be, I have to say, I think probably one of the most exciting uh, vocal workshops and giveaways that I've ever been a part of. I'm super, super grateful to Focus Right and Sure uh, that we've all partnered together to create this, uh, hopefully, a really, really good workshop for everybody where you learn a lot, but also um, we have some fantastic prizes, plural prizes to give away. Um, what I'm really, really excited about and where I, what I really want to see in the chat right now, where is everybody from? I know a lot of people have already been putting this in there, but we just want to see where everybody's from while I go ahead and get my slides together. And while I do that, um, let me go ahead and just start sharing my screen. And then I'm going to introduce everyone. Whoops, don't need to share a video file. I actually need to share my screen. Here we go. And share audio. Perfect. OK, great. So everybody should be able to see like these slides kind of uh, as soon as John opens them up. Perfect. OK, can everyone see three steps to expand your vocal range? By the way, this is going to be a super, super interactive workshop today. So I want to see the chat blown up like crazy. Let's see. We got people from Canada, Houston, UK, India, South Carolina, Long Beach. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Great guys. So this is the three steps to expand your vocal range. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Matt Ramsey. I'm the founder of RamseyVoice.com and the Master Your Voice Singing Course. Uh, me and my partner, Monica, and our dog, Lola, live here in Austin, Texas. It's a little gray out so far today. I've seen the sun come out a little bit. Um, now, like many voice teachers, I started off by teaching private lessons. Um, but five years ago, one of my students was like, hey, man, you need to start a YouTube channel. And so I started doing that a few years back. And as a result, I saw that there were still a lot of people that were really, really confused about how to improve their singing. So three years ago, I created the Master Your Voice Singing Program, um, which is the only singing course out there featuring personal feedback from a real five-star singing coach as well as a proven system of exercises. And humble brag, I'm a five-star rated vocal coach, and I've taught over a thousand people to sing more in tune, expand their range, and gain control of their voice. John, why don't you go ahead, take it away, introduce yourself. Thanks, Matt. I'm John DiNicola uh, with Focusrite. I'm from a field trader and product specialist for Focusrite and also the Novation brands. I'm based in New York City, uh, where it's actually a really beautiful day today. Um, so I support both of our brands through dealer trainings and uh, public facing events um, in the Northeast US um, and then of, of course in the virtual space now uh, in this past year or so as well. And uh, I'm a musician as well, uh, more of a guitar player than a singer um, and also an audio engineer for over 15 years. And Maggie, th today unlike past workshops that we've done, we've actually got a fantastic singer with us. People are asking for a picture of my dog. Maybe later, um, I'll maybe add that into the next slide deck that we do. Uh, but unlike the last workshop that we did, we were like, hey, man, it would actually be really cool if we had a real singer. And uh, the good folks at Focus Right were like, hey, we actually have a fantastic singer on the payroll. Maggie, go for it. Hi, I'm Maggie. Um, my artist, DJ, producer, vocalist, moniker is Ghost in Real Life. Um, I also do tech support for Focus Right Innovation, which is cool. Um, I've been a vocalist forever. Um, 14 years is honestly just a guesstimate. Uh, I've been singing since I hopped out of the wound. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, DJing, producing for at least six years now. Um, and I very much love it. And I also, I'm based in Los Angeles and I live here with my lovely orange cat, Milo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely we gotta have we gotta have all the pets in there john yeah. you, you didn't mention anything about your pets do you have any i don't have any pets unfortunately okay uh, <laughs> all right got it <laughs> all right perfect well let us talk prizes which is why everyone's here right everyone wants to learn how to sing better but let's talk about those prizes seriously so um we are going to be giving away a grand prize at a random time 
sometime throughout this workshop. So make sure that you guys are in it for the duration. Make sure you're taking notes. I'll be quizzing you as we go through it. Uh, but the grand prize winner is going to receive lifetime access to the Master Your Voice singing course, which features a personalized vocal assessment from a five-star singing coach, me, um, a custom roadmap of how to actually work through the, the course, uh, 62 step-by-step -step video lessons, 42 audio warm-ups, 10 in-depth modern song tutorials, and of course, the most important part of vocal training is someone to actually keep you accountable and on track with your goals, which is something that we always see when we teach ourselves to sing. John, you want to talk about the fantastic equipment we're giving away today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to start starting off with our, uh, our Focusrite product. We have a Scarlett 8i6 interface that we're giving away today. Um, so that's going to be, uh, that's one of our Scarlett audio interfaces, USB interfaces for connecting your microphone to your computer over USB. So this particular model uh, includes two of our Scarlett mic preamps, um, which are been upgraded for our third generation. We'll talk about that as we go through the presentation. Um, so you can connect your microphone here, and these inputs also support uh, quarter-inch connections. So if you're a guitar player or a keyboard player, you can, you can connect that up here as well. Um, it includes a bunch of different software, everything you need to get started. And so, yeah, unpack, plug in, and record. And uh, yeah, that's the Scarlett and, 8i6. And John, why why is this, or how is this different from like the models that other people might be familiar with, like the, the 2i2, for instance? Yeah, sure. Um, what's actually kind of cool about the Scarlett line is uh, the sound quality is pretty much consistent, exactly the same throughout. So as you get uh, to the larger models, we're just giving additional features, uh, more inputs, for example. So... Uh, the 8i6 has additional line inputs on the back for connecting um, maybe synthesizers, keyboards, etc. Uh, another cool feature of the 8i6 is you can see it has a second headphone output as well. So that's really nice when you're working uh, with another vocalist or maybe um, just for the producer or engineer to have a headphone as well as the singer. Um, so that's handy to have as well. So basically, like I said, as you go up through the line, you get the same great sound quality no matter what size, but you just get more features, uh, additional inputs and outputs, Same great et sound, but more options. Exactly. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And uh, you also mentioned that you get a lot of bundled software with this too. Yeah, absolutely. So you get a light Ableton Live Lite, um, Pro Tools first, so you have two different DAWs to choose from, and then loads of effects, virtual instruments, a little bit of everything to get it. Like I said, everything you need to kind of get going. Awesome. And this is the part that I'm, I'm really excited about all of it, but uh, we were super honored um, to partner with Shure, uh, the one of the, the best uh, pro uh, microphone producers out there. Um, and they have contributed a very, very special microphone to us. Uh, John, you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Shure SM7B. Um, it's really a legendary dynamic microphone, industry standard for sure. Um, dynamic microphone. So it has a really smooth, flat wide frequency response, as you can see, and you can kind of read all the, a little bit more about it here, but um, it's just a really great sounding mic, uh, especially being a dynamic mic. It's great because um, it's, it's a little bit less sensitive, but in a good way. If you have a room that's not quite properly treated, you're going to still get a nice, tight, warm sound out of it. Um, so it's really great for uh, vocals and broadcast and uh, really anything, uh, instruments as well. And Fantastic. And along with that, uh, the the industry standard microphone here, um, we're also giving away this cloud lifter, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the cloud lifter, a lot of dynamic microphones, especially the SM7B, uh, by their nature, being a little bit less sensitive, require a lot of gain. Um, sure specifies over 60 dB for the SM7B. And most audio interfaces, if not all, don't have quite that much gain. The Scarlet's come very close. They're around 56 um, but, um, so that's where the cloud lifter comes in. It gives you that extra bit of boost and of clean gain for those dynamic microphones. Awesome. And I think we put this all together and it's like, it's over like a thousand dollars, maybe like $1,300 worth of amazing pro audio equipment. Of course, we're giving that away at a random time today. So make sure that you guys, uh, stick around for the whole thing. It's probably going to run about an hour, hour five, hour 10, you know, we'll be somewhere in there. And today we're going to be covering the three steps that all singers need to follow in order to hit those higher notes with power. Now, I know that sounds really clickbaity, but I promise you that even if you are a self-trained vocalist, you will learn a whole lot more about how you actually need to hit those higher notes with power uh, if you stick around. Number two, we're gonna be talking about how Sure microphones and Focusrite's third generation audio interfaces are actually going to improve your sound across this vocal range. Of course, it doesn't matter how good you sound if you can't pick up the signal. So, and then uh, at a random point, we're gonna be giving away 
a grand prize, and then we're going to have a Q&A uh, about what we covered at the end. So step number one, and you guys can go ahead and write this down. Step number one, um, and John, could you just make this slide? Yeah, perfect. A little bit bigger. Excellent. Um, step number one that everyone needs to do in order to hit higher notes in their voice is they need to find their head voice. Makes sense, right? Um, if you're not familiar with head voice, this is uh, typically what we refer to as the top part of the vocal range. So that that is what we as vocal coaches call head voice. Now, how do you expand your vocal range? Well, when we're talking about expanding your vocal range, what we're really talking about is stretching the vocal cords um, themselves. Now, the vocal cords are just these membranous tissues of muscle and membrane that hang out in your voice box, in your larynx, in the middle of your throat. And just like a pair of rubber bands, or in this case, a hair tie, which is what I happen to have here, as you sing higher, the vocal cords will naturally stretch, and this creates a higher pitch. The longer the stretch, the higher the pitch, because the longer the stretch, the faster the vocal folds are going to vibrate. Um, and so in actually, in order to hit those higher notes, as I just mentioned, you need the vocal cords to vibrate faster. And when the cords are stretched out, we sing with what voice teachers often call head voice. Um, just a quick diagram to kind of like demonstrate what we're talking about. We can think of chest voice resonance as being kind of in the bottom part of the voice, that ah, that really full sound. You can think of the head voice resonance as being that ah, that I just demonstrated. And then many uh, mixed voice teachers, myself included, will often teach singers to mix between both the chest and the head so that it's not just one or the other, but it has some of both. Does that make sense? Is this interesting to everyone so far? This makes sense so far. <laughs> All right, fantastic. People are saying interesting. Yes, indeed. Perfect. Okay, great. Oh my gosh. And we got people all the way from Nigeria. Excellent. Um, and just another diagram to kind of um, demonstrate this idea of this head voice. Um, many singers or vocal coaches use the terms head voice and falsetto interchangeably. I'm not one of those people, but this diagram might kind of help. We can think of this, this top part of the voice as being the absence of this chest voice. And in this kind of head voice configuration or this falsetto configuration, we, we don't want to get too specific just yet. This is what the vocal cords look like in this, in this headier sound. The vocal cords are thinner and creating that, that kind of breathier quality because rather than getting this full, this fuller sound that's coming from the vocal cords closing a lot more completely, instead they're thinner. Um, as I mentioned, that the reason that they thin out and the reason that I'm able to hit that higher note is because I'm basically stretching out my vocal cords slightly. So in order to expand your vocal range, we actually need to stretch the cords and find more of that head voice. So how do you actually do this? This is step one. Well, one of the best ways uh, in order to find more of that head voice is to actually use singing vowels as tools to encourage you to find more head voice. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, typically, these singing vowels, you can think of vowels as the spaces um, in between consonants, uh, like a, a, e, o, u, for instance. Um, this is These are sounds where my vocal cords are vibrating, but my vocal tract is somewhat open. My jaw, my mouth, uh, my pharynx, my larynx, uh, some of these areas in my voice are slightly open. Now, in the case of finding more head voice, oftentimes more close vowels, what we call close vowels, are the best vowels to sing higher. A couple of examples of these close vowels might be ooh, an E. Why do we call them closed vowels? Well, because my jaw is quite small. It's not open that much. And the vowel itself, the opening in my throat is quite small. So if I go ooh or E, you'll see that compared to an ah or ah, my jaw is a lot more closed. Does that make sense to everyone? Is everyone following this so far? Okay, fantastic. Absolutely. Perfect. Just wanted to check in with everyone. Everyone's getting this. Okay, awesome. Now, let's play a, a real quick little game. Can anyone name a song that has a high note on an ooh or an e vowel? Can anyone come up with an example of something uh, of a song that includes this? Perfect. Okay, great. I'm going to give everyone a second. 
to jump on in here. Guys, I want to see this chat totally explode. I want you guys to be in this. I want you guys to be learning as much as you can. One of the best ways to do that is by participating. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we've got, let's see, so many great answers so far. Don't stop believing. Um, I don't know of an ooh or an e in that one just yet. Maybe uh, someone could clarify that. Uh, driver's license, the lion sleeps tonight. Ooh, right? Uh, take on me. Yes. Uh, in a day or two. Right? We've got that high note there. I'm trying to like think of these really quickly off the fly. Uh, when the going gets tough, Reckoner, Sherry. Yeah. Sherry. Right? We've got that. Uh, kind of a more pharyngeal sound. God is a woman, Ariana Grande. This is fantastic. Um, now, I went ahead and just uh, added some examples in here. Anyway, we've got Fleet Foxes singing Oliver James, The Supreme singing Baby Love. Ooh, baby love. Right? Um, Jeff Buckley singing Mojo Pin. Red Hot Chili Pepper singing Scar Tissue. Here's just a couple quick clips. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles. On and just in case you wanted a Capital One Venture Card offered by Jennifer Garner, here you go. Every purchase, every day. Objection! Oh. With the best you shed, it's a lonely view. It's a lonely view. Right, here's another example. Very, very common to sing higher notes with this sound. Here's Jeff Buckley. And I put this in here just because everybody should know who Jeff Buckley is. It doesn't get much more angelic than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a vocal exercise together. Is this making sense to everyone? Is everyone interested in this so far? Okay, I just want to make sure that everyone's getting this and everyone's totally engaged. Okay, people are saying yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. Okay, great. Maggie, would you come and join us for a second? What up, Maggie? What's up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. You living with that? I see you're repping that Sure SM58 mic right there. Yes, I am. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so let's do something crazy. Let's try a vocal exercise. Um, so we're going to try to discover some head voice here. In this particular case, we're going to try a foo. Now, I want everybody at home to be doing this as well. You can do it along with me, do it along with Maggie. But what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to practice along with this at home. I don't care what time it is. You're, you're going to wake up your neighbors, your parents, whatever. They already think you're weird. It's totally fine. So what we're going to do, Maggie, is we're going to sing just a high pitch on foo, like food. Can you just match this? Can you go foo, foo? Lovely. Can you turn down your gain just a tiny bit on your beautiful, what a, what a focus right audio interface are you rocking over there? I'm working the uh, 18i20. All right. Fantastic. So we're going to do foo. So we're just going to do a siren drop from an octave, this is a C-sharp five down to a C-sharp four for those of you who are following along at home. <laughs> Lovely, let's go even higher. <laughs> Good, and by the way guys, if you're feeling that your voice has a little break with the <laughs> this is totally fine. Um, it's actually an indication that you're doing something right in that you're finding your head voice. Now, is that ideal long-term? No, it's not. Uh, eventually, we want to get to the point where you're, you're able to blend in between them better. Um, let's do uh, just one more, Maggie, and we'll go right here. Lovely, lovely. Okay, <laughs> brings me back to childhood. Everyone having that crack in their voice. Love it. Um, now, some of the guys said that it's a little too high for them. So I'll go ahead and bring you up to right here. Gentlemen, you can join me here. Now here. <laughs> we all sound like idiots and I love it. That's so funny. 
But Ignacio, you bring up a good point uh, in that, yeah, we have to do some crazy vocal exercises sometimes in order to sing better, right? Now, why is this exercise working so well at helping us get to that top part of our voice? Well, obviously that larger range of an octave in this case, and we could go even larger than that, is going to access more of your head voice. Um, also, starting on that top pitch is really, really helping a lot too. Um, and number three, that fricative consonant of that F, that F, and that close vowel encourage more stretch in the vocal cords. Now, John's going to talk just a little bit about why you're able to hear even some of the highest kind of sounds uh, because I'm using my Focusrite third generation with air mode on right now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So we've added the air mode to our third generation of Scarlet's. And what that does is it models our classic transformer based ISA preamps. And those are known for um, having just a really nice warm analog sound, especially on the top end. So it's going to add that analog color to your sound. And it really just breathes life into vocals. Uh, it adds that unique high-end detail and clarity, um, but in a nice warm way that complements those warm vocal tones. Right. So it's not like turning up the treble like all the way to 11, right? <laughs> you're just like, you're you're slightly simulating those higher pitches. So it's sound, or not those higher pitches, those higher frequencies and harmonics to, to yeah it's, it's, it's a it's an ever so slight bump um and it actually is it's really useful with dynamic microphones as well to add a little bit of the top end um uh, back in there as well so great with something like you, an sm7b yeah would you say dynamics tend to have like more of that mid boost yeah they, the dyna dynamic microphones typically tend to roll off in the higher frequencies so and definitely adding using the air mode is one way to kind of get a little bit of that back Absolutely. Now, this brings us to step two. Like, so in addition to finding that head voice, um, and in addition to, you know, getting getting up to those higher notes, we also need to get the chords to close more. Um, so how do you actually get those high notes to sound strong? So rather than a, to, to that fuller sound, Hopefully I didn't blow out my microphone doing that. Well, just getting the vocal cords to stretch on their own is not enough. Because if you do that, basically what we're just talking about is singing in falsetto. Um, the cords are so thin that they're barely touching. And you're not really getting a complex um, kind of harmonic sound like John was just talking about um, that the focus right tends to get you so well. Um, so what we actually want is we want those vocal cords to continue closing effectively while they stretch. So we want them to stretch, but if they have like this big gap in between them in the middle the whole time, we're just going to get a lot of air. So if instead, if we can get the cords to continue vibrating, even while they're stretching, that's the whole deal. And uh, just to give you another kind of graphic to illustrate what we're talking about, the falsetto here, we're just talking about the thin edges of the vocal cords touching. But in what uh, we really want, where we're singing those higher notes with more power, basically, we're getting more of the vocal cords to close. We call that a vertical phase difference. For anyone that else that's a, uh, a vocal nerd like me, vocal nerds unite, uh, vertical phase difference is the term for that. Um, and again, just going back to this idea of like, yeah, we've got chest on the bottom, we've got head on the top, but we want to have some sort of a combination of the two. So in order to hit higher notes, we need the chords to close while they stretch, right? So how do you actually get this to happen? Well, you won't be surprised to know because, you know, I'm the crazy vocal coach that's always giving you crazy exercises. One of the best ways of getting the chords to close evenly is using consonants and vowels. Now, certain sounds will actually promote more of the vocal fold closure than other ones. And uh, just to give away the answer real quick, I was going to quiz you guys on this. Voiced consonants and front vowels will tend to promote more closure. And you can write that down because I'm going to explain that in a second. Voiced consonants and front vowels. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, in a voiced consonant or a front vowel, the vocal cords are closing more. So if you're... Uh, if you're a little confused about what this means just now, just remember this. The more air that you hear in the voice, the less the vocal cords are vibrating. So do I have more air in this sound? I'm in love with the world. Or in this sound, I'm in love with the world. Which one has more air? Which one are the vocal cords vibrating less in? A or B? 
which one are the vocal cords vibrating less in? Gonna give everyone a second to answer here. Yes, people are saying number one, number one, we've got the answer, absolutely. Yes, so A, the vocal folds are closing less. I have less of that chord closure, and as a result, I'm getting less of the sound. Now, so what we're gonna do, because you guys know I love these challenges, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple different sounds together, and we're going to compare them. And what I want you guys to do is tell me in the chat which one get the vocal cords to close more. So I made this nifty little vowel chart that everyone can look at. So in the bottom left-hand corner, by the way, this isn't in IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. This is instead like the way that we perceive vowels uh, kind of in the Western uh, hemisphere, typically more of like uh, the US specifically. So in the bottom left-hand corner, we have E, A, E, A from bottom to top. And then coming right over the top of the pyramid, we have A, A, O, U. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a couple of sounds. Maggie, would you come back in and join us for a second? Fantastic. <laughs> what up, Maggie? What's up? What's up? Okay, <laughs> can we make some funny sounds together? Sure. Is that something you're interested in? Very interested. Very interested. I love it. Um, why don't we try this? Can you do me a favor and can you go e like eat? Eat. Great. Let me find a good pitch for you. How about? Yeah, that's pretty good. E one more time. E. Good. Now go ooh. Same pitch. Ooh. Absolutely. Now. Which one do you feel is a little bit buzzier in your voice? Which one do you feel kind of vibrates a little bit more? The E one. The E does? Mm -hmm. So that E versus the ooh. Everybody go ahead and put it in the chat. Which one sounds a little bit buzzier than the other one? And we're just talking a little bit here. These are very, very subtle differences. Go ahead and do it again, Maggie, please. E. Ooh. Lovely. Okay, great. So we've got uh, a pretty good consensus in the chat. People are saying E has a little bit more buzz to it. And I would totally agree with that. So if you actually look at the left-hand side of this pyramid, all of these vowels are fronted. Now, everybody go ahead and do this. And Maggie, you can do it with us too. Can you go E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A. Perfect. Everyone go ahead and do this at home with us too. Um, now what I want you to try, Maggie, is can you go, ah, like apple? Ah. Great. Now, as you do that, notice where your tongue is. Can you do that again? Ah. Ah. Good. And I hope everyone's doing this at home too and scaring their dog and scaring their cats, um, as they do it. Um, now go, ah, and then go, ah. 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 Good. Now, as you do that, notice what happens with your tongue as you go from ah to ah. Can you do it one more time? Ah. Ah. Absolutely. Great. Now, um, which one, do, do you notice anything that happens with your tongue when you go from ah to ah? Yeah, it like, it like scoops down. Well, on which one scoops down? Uh, ah. Yeah, the ah, the tongue kind of descends in the mouth a little bit more. So with the ah, the tongue is up and it's very, very fronted in the mouth, whereas ah, the tongue is just a little bit flatter in the bottom of the mouth. Um, and this is why we call the left-hand side of this pyramid front vowels. So these are front vowels. And if you look at kind of the bottom end, these guys are more close vowels. Perfect job, everyone. Uh, give yourselves a pat on the back. You know what? Let's do something crazy. Do you guys want to do something crazy? Okay. Um, Maggie, you can pop off for this. So I have been, I have not been given permission for this. So if Focus Right's not cool with it, then I hope they they let me know. What's but, what's going on here, Matt? Dude, I think it'd be <laughs> cool if we gave away a prize real quick. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't know. I might get my we might, might get in a little trouble, but uh, I don't know. Let's go for it. What do you say? It depends on the prize, right? <laughs> You're like, if we're giving away a car here, that we'd have to get that approved. Okay, so everyone's interested. Okay, cool. So, um, 
I think you guys have a spare SM58 and a spare Focusrite 2i2 hanging around it uh, over there, right? I'm, I'm sure we can find one. You can find one somewhere? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so why don't we do this? I want to I want to quiz you guys to make sure that everyone has been paying attention so far. Um, can anyone name me a close front vowel? A close front vowel. So remember, those close vowels are going to help you access more head voice, and those front vowels are actually going to keep the tongue forward, which helps the vocal cords close more. Okay. All right, we've got an answer already. Jay Winslow killing it with the E. E vowel is a fantastic example of a front close vowel. My jaw is slightly closed. E. My tongue is slightly forward. Uh, and other people were saying ooh or ah. Those are actually back vowels where my tongue is sliding a little bit more back. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and hook up Jay Winslow uh, with the SM58 and a 2i2. Congratulations to you, Jay. Awesome. Congrats, Jay. All right. So don't worry, guys. We're giving away plenty of stuff today. So make sure you stick around to the very end. There's going to be a lot more here. And by the way, if you haven't actually entered to win this yet, um, just being here on this live stream is not enough. You actually have to go to focusright.com forward slash vocal dash clinic. Um, and Jay, you just need to uh, email daniel.hewley at uh, focusright.com in order to claim your prize. Um, so congratulations, Jay. Um, but there's plenty more to come. But in order to uh, have the option of winning, you have to actually go to the Focusrite Vocal Clinic uh, website in order to uh, register there. But I want to make sure that everybody, oh, we've got a little ticker at the bottom, but everybody make sure that you're still sticking around uh, because uh, we're going to give away our grand prize at a random time today. So stick around. So Maggie, would you come back and join me for just a second? Hello. Awesome. Okay, great. Hello. Um, so let's uh, let's follow Jay's lead and let's try a vocal exercise that helps us not only access head voice, but at the same time gets the vocal cords to close. So um, we're actually going to do an octave repeat gi exercise, as in <clears throat> geese. Now notice this E vowel is a close front vowel. So that's going to help us access more head voice, but at the same time, it's going to get the cords to close in the way that we need them to. So Maggie... Would you go ahead and just sing a an octave repeat ki, please? Good. Now, and watch your pitch on that third one. Make sure we get that third one right. Beautiful. And I want all the ladies to follow along with this at home. Here we go. That's it. Right, turn down your gain just a tiny bit. Same place right here. You got it. Good, watch your starting pitch there. Excellent. Now, my guess is that's probably a little too high for some of the guys out there. So why don't we try that right here, gentlemen? So moving up, G4 on top. Perfect time for a burp. Wouldn't you agree? Coming down. Last one. All right, guys, we finished on F sharp there. Excellent work. Now, why is this exercise working so well? Well, that shorter range is going to promote more closure of the vocal cords while still helping you sing high. So the whole kind of like the, the whole method breaks down like this. You want to work on as many things simultaneously as you can. Now, I'm breaking it down into three very simple steps today. But oftentimes, when you work with a real vocal coach, you can actually work on multiple steps at the same time. Hopefully, all that makes sense. 
Now, in this particular case, this glottal consonant of that G to that is helping the vocal cords close right off the bat. And that close vowel, that E, is helping you keep that closure of the vocal cords. And John's going to talk about why this is so, so crucial to be able to hear even up to the highest harmonics in your voice. Uh, John, you're on mute. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, our third generation Scarlet's um, have a really, really smooth frequency response throughout the range of human hearing. So humans generally can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, theoretically, at least most of us can't get all the way up to 20 kilohertz, but the Scarlet's certainly can. Um, most interfaces are going to be able to uh, re reproduce those frequencies within about one decibel. But our third generation Scarlet's are accurate within one tenth of a decibel. So extremely flat and accurate all the way across the frequency range. So you can capture all the upper harmonics of your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you describe this term? Uh, what do you mean by flat? Like, I think we think of flat in terms of singing. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, a flat is in the curve of the EQ. So if you have a really basic EQ, maybe like even in your car, you might have like a low and a high end. Um, so if you have those uh, set in the middle, it's flat. You don't have any type of, you know, you're not changing the frequency response at all. Got um, it. As opposed to color, as opposed to a more colored sound where you may roll off some of the, the high end or change the sound in some way. Got it. So like you're keeping like a level playing field so that when people do want to like EQ it or compressor or whatever, they have the, the options to do that rather than like making that choice for them. Yeah, exactly. You get a nice, clean, accurate, uh, capture it very accurately, and then you can kind of sculpt it the way you want to. Perfect. Awesome. Well, this brings us all to step three, guys. So just to recap, what have we done? Well, we needed to find head voice. We needed to get the vocal cords to stretch, right? Those two are synonymous. Number two, we need to get the vocal cords to continue closing to get that really, really cool sound. Actually, I found this cool thing. Hold on one second. I'm going to try something really off the cuff. This wasn't working earlier when I tried it. So we're just going to try something really crazy just to kind of go back to what John is saying about picking up this frequency spectrum. I want to just try something real quick here. So let's go this. Hey, everybody, I'm really big now. Um, I'm going to go share screen. And if anyone hasn't tried this before, it's really, really cool, too. Um, this is a Chrome Music Lab. This is a, a live spectrogram that you can see. And I think this might be one of the better demonstrations. Hopefully it is. I don't know if it's working or not. But it uh, tends to be one of the better visual demonstrations of why these vowels matter. So, for instance, what we're seeing right here is we're seeing all the harmonics in my voice as I'm saying them. Now, harmonics, in case you're not familiar, we hear one note like an ah, but there's so much more uh, uh, kind of data, kind of song info or musical information built into that one pitch than what most people hear. So I'm just going to try something real quick. We're going to go, ooh. Now take a look at that and compare that to e. Now, take a look at which one has more red to it, more red across the whole spectrum. Ooh, e. Which one has more harmonics in the upper part of it? I'm going to turn that off so that <laughs> you guys aren't just seeing everything that I say repeated exactly. Which one has more harmonics built into it, into the top end of it. Could anybody see? Yeah, Paul. Paul said E. Steve said E. Exactly. It's actually that E vowel. I'm going to turn it on one more time so that you guys can see it. So I want you guys to look at the top end up here. Up here is the important part. So we're going to go, ooh. Now look at the top end. E. Does everyone see this huge boost in harmonic power up there? That's exactly why um, these E vowels tend to be really, really great in helping you get the vocal cords to close more. Because the more the vocal cords are closing, the more complex and the more rich the harmonic sound that we're going to get. Is this interesting to everyone? I just want to make sure I'm not getting too deep into the weeds, that this is you know, still interesting and helpful to you guys. OK, <laughs> this is so freaking interesting. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for using the fricative consonant there. Freaking amazing. Excellent job. 
Okay, great. So this all brings us to step number three, because what you're going to notice is that we need to keep the larynx relaxed. What do I mean by that? Well, when you start singing these higher notes, one thing that you'll notice is that when you start singing these higher notes for the first time, your voice will probably sound quite strained. Like you might even hear that like you might be comfortable on the bottom, but when you get up to that top note, you'll you'll notice that things get a little bit tight. Now, what causes that to happen? Well, there's a lot of things that cause that to happen, but if we wanted to isolate it to just kind of one big area that we can kind of look at, the larynx tends to rise when you're singing those high notes for the first time. And if the larynx is too high, oftentimes your voice will sound strainy and may even break. Now, in case you're uh, not familiar with what the larynx is, the larynx is just the voice box that's chilling out in the middle part of your throat, and it actually houses the vocal cords inside of it. Um, you can call it the Adam's apple, thyroid cartilage, whatever you want to call it. It's this space right here directly beneath my chin. Now, what I want everybody to do, oh, I need to scroll down to see all the new comments. Excellent. Um, what I want everybody to do is just take your thumb and your first finger and very, very gently just feel your larynx in between your fingers. You're not squeezing, you're not pressing, you're just feeling it. And what I want everyone to do is I want, actually, uh, if uh, Maggie, could you come back and join us for a second? Hey, hey, you're on that side now, pretty cool. Um, what I want you to do, Maggie, is I want you to just gently feel your larynx with your thumb and your first finger. And I want you to just go on a high note, okay? Wonderful. Good. Now, just uh, relax, and I want you to feel where the larynx is when you're not doing anything, when you're just hanging out. And then do the same thing and go, Ooh, and I want you to tell me if it moves at all. Ooh. Which way does it move, if, if at all? Uh, it moves upwards. Yeah, it moves a little bit up, right? Um, now, this is really, really common. Does anyone else feel that? Does anyone else feel that their larynx moves up as they're singing into those higher notes? It moves so noticeably. Fantastic. Okay, great. This is great feedback, guys. Um, now, what we can do, and you can try this again with us, Maggie, and everyone, uh, go ahead and try this along at home. Again, feel your larynx with your thumb and your first finger, and just pretend to yawn. Pretend to have a nice big, oh, nice big yawn. Oh. Now, I want you guys to put in the chat, do you feel the larynx move anywhere as you pretend to yawn? And if so, where? I'm gonna quiz you in just a second, Maggie, but I wanna just see what people in the in the chat are saying. People are saying that it's moving down. Very, very interesting. Would you agree with that, Maggie? Yes. <laughs> and by the way, it's totally fine if you don't. Like if you feel something different from what I'm talking about, this is totally natural and to be expected. Not we are not robots. Uh, the voice, you know, behaves differently for everybody. Um, but in general, what you may find, and I'm just kind of skipping ahead here, by the way, this is a diagram of the larynx. You're not going to be quizzed on any of these terms, but just all this to say, like, it's a very, very complex instrument that houses our singing voice. But to skip ahead for just a second, certain sounds can actually help the larynx to relax, such as this kind of yawny or kind of dopey or goofy sound that we just demonstrated. And even certain vowels can help us do what we need to do in order to get the voice to relax. Maggie, join me again um, and just feel your larynx with your thumb and your first finger. And do me a favor and go, eh, like ed. Eh. Great. Now do the same thing, and I hope everybody's doing this at home. Do eh, like ed, just to give them a chance to, to catch up. Eh. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Now do that same thing on uh, like us. Us. Very, very good. Now, when you guys tried that at home, did you feel the larynx move at all? And if so, let's put it, let's make it really A, B, like true or false. Did the eh move the larynx up more or did the uh move the larynx up more? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Which one moved the larynx up? Eh or uh? Okay, people are saying the uh was more down. It moved the larynx down. And people are saying the eh 
move the larynx up. Would you agree with that, Maggie? You don't have to, by the way, you don't have to agree with this. <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't really tell. Okay, fair enough. And these are really, really small differences sometimes. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. Just feel this and go, eh, like ed. Eh. Right, right, right. And now, uh, like us. Us. Oh, not us. 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 <laughs> there we go. Yeah, when you do it kind of goofy like that, the larynx goes down even more. Um, someone just said, like, my larynx moves two inches down into the left. Should I see a doctor? Uh, depends on the length of your throat, I guess. Uh, two inches is relative, I suppose. Now, I just wanted to point this out, that while many people can achieve, you know, these first two steps of finding the head voice and getting the vocal cords to close a little bit more, in other words, it's pretty easy to... And like it's pretty easy to move all the way across your range it doesn't necessarily sound very good um and actually getting the larynx to relax a little bit while you do that then uh, is really really a big key here and oftentimes it requires just a little bit more practice so maggie we're gonna try a vocal exercise are you ready very ready very so ready fantastic all right guys and everyone that's at home we're going to be doing the same thing. And if you haven't heard the scale before, it's an octave and a half arpeggio on mum, like mother. Can everyone just say mum, mum, mum? Maggie, go ahead. Mum, mum, mum. Lovely. Okay, great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sing that mum on an octave and a half arpeggio. So, mum, 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 mum. So, it's this octave and a half. And I know that I went through that scale really quickly. It's all over my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do that now. Uh, the octave and a half arpeggio is a really, really great vocal exercise. So um, for ladies, we're going to start up right here. Mum, 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 on mum as in mother. Maggie, you go ahead and try that, and the ladies at home will try it right along with you. Okay. Great. Turn up your gain just a tiny bit more. Sorry to make you keep playing with it. It's right okay. in between the last two that you had. Now try it here. Lovely. Now here. You got it. Good. Now, just for the sake of doing it in this demonstration, can you make that mum just a little bit yawnier? So, can we go a little bit more towards that? Just a little bit more yawny and opera sounding. Lovely. One more. Good. Watch your fourth note there. That ma 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 ma. That one needs to be a little solid. So the ones on top. Ma 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 ma. That's it. One more. Ma 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 ma. Good. And that's an F five on the top. And Maggie sounds great. Her voice is really, really nicely in balance with this exercise. She really loves it. There's no doubt that um, everybody has their own vocal issues that they need to work through. Um, and in order to work through them, oftentimes you need personalized vocal exercises. So just a gee and a, a foo and a mum may not necessarily work for you, but everybody needs their own specific thing. Guys, we're going to start right here. So mum, 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 mum. Now here, key of C sharp. One more. Yeah, people are saying this is hard. And oftentimes it is a little bit hard to do this uh, all at the same time. Because remember, not only do we want to find that top part of your voice, but we also want the vocal cords to close and we want the larynx to relax. So it's a lot of stuff going on all at once. But why this exercise tends to work is because that larger vocal range helps you access your t entire vocal range. So in this particular case, we have an octave and a half. Anyone want to guess 
what the average range of a female song is? Anyone want to guess? Maggie, do you want to jump in with a guess too? Anyone I have. Guess? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give us a guess. It's totally fine, even if you're, even if you're not even close. Uh... You think about it. You think about it and get back to me. Okay, we're getting a lot of people saying two octaves, two and a half octaves. C sharp, that's not a range. <laughs> that's a key or a specific tone. Two octaves, three octaves. Oh my gosh, guys, this is crazy. Um, I've only seen like two people get it pretty close so far. It's really right around an octave and a fourth or an octave and a fifth. Really, that's that's pretty, that's actually a pretty large range. For, for most female songs. I know that we all get really, really crazy about Mariah Carey being able to sing like five octaves and stuff like that. But actually, you really probably need to make one and a half to two octaves sound really, really good because most songs are going to fit within that. Um, I think in, in I Will Always Love You is probably a great example of that. I believe it's only got like an octave and a fourth of range, but it's all on the higher end, right? Which is what makes it so hard to sing. Um, so that large range of an octave and a half in this scale, um, just one single scale, you're singing that much range right off the bat. And additionally, this nasal consonant helps provide some chord closure while that uh vowel kind of relaxes the throat. Now, John's going to talk a little bit about why it's so crucial for this kind of third generation uh, Scarlet interfaces to be able to, to capture this entire range uh, of sound as well as volumes. John, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Matt. So we talked previously a little bit about um, the frequency response of the Scarlet and the, the tone. So that having to do with like the pitch. And so another important thing uh, is the dynamics, uh, the difference between the quietest and the loudest signals that can be captured. So uh, Matt, as I'm sure Matt will agree, the voice is one of the most dynamic instruments, you know, that you can try to record. So uh, of course, you know, it can get as quiet as a little whisper and then all the way up to those really loud belting high notes that you sometimes uh, that you go for. And so um, it's just really good to be able, so you want to be able to capture, you know, all of that from the quietest part to the loudest part. Um, on our Scarlet third gens, we've raised our dynamic range all the way up to 111 decibels, which is a, a really good number. Um, if you're not familiar with these types of specs, um, you know, the 16-bit recording for CDs is theoretically maxes out at 96 dB. Um, the vinyl LPs we all love now um, have a dynamic range all the way down around 70 dB. So... Um, you're going to be well covered by the Scarlet's uh, dynamic range of 111 uh, for your recordings. And again, that's just going to help you handle capturing everything from your quietest falsetto or whisper uh, to the more powerful, louder notes. I love that. Look at your singing terms, John. I love them. You're busting, you're busting out the vocab on me. I've been learning from you a lot. Dude, this is amazing. <laughs> and and you, you had a really, really great uh, analogy yesterday about how it's kind of like, you know, the, the car speedometer goes up to like 120. <laughs> Uh, sure. and, and hopefully most people aren't driving that fast, but it's, it's good to know that you, your car can go that fast. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we were talking about why you would need the dynamic range to be so high. And, uh, and yeah, it's kind of like that. It's always nice to have a little bit of extra headroom, um, whether it's in your car or, or when you're recording. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's such a great analogy. Now, um, I was thinking we would, uh, we're a little short on time. So I was thinking that we would maybe apply this to a song with Maggie. Um, Maggie, do you want to just join us for just a second? And maybe we'll just take a look at a line or two of a song together. Sure. Awesome. Cool. Uh, what song do you want to work on? Uh, I really like that song, um, My Hair by Ariana Grande. Is it is it Ariana or Ariana? Maybe I've been saying it wrong this whole time. It could just be my Jersey accent. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Ariana, come Ariana. on. Ariana. <laughs> Perfect. Love that. Love that very much. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is a fantastic study in vowels. Uh, Jersey people tend to use more open front vowels than Ariana. They go for it. Ariana, come on. Uh, very, very front vowels. You can hear how much buzzier they are. Now, uh, let me just pull it up. Hold on one second. Ooh, do you want to try that? Da, 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 da. That seems like it would be hard. 
Sign your hands in my hair. Good. Do it one more time. Can you go, my, 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 my. Do it on a mom. So, my, my, my. My, 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 my. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, do that same thing, and let's go back to the lyrics with that same kind of uh feeling. So put your hands in my hair. So put your hands in my hair. Right, but don't push on that first note. So put your, so put your hands in my hair. So, bleh. I know it, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> can anyone can any hold on real quick this is a learning opportunity can anyone tell me why the the starting note so so might be a difficult note to start on can anyone tell me why that would be i'm quizzing you guys again can you believe it why would so on a c sharp five why would that be a hard note to start on can anyone tell me WLH said the I think I can agree with that. Can everyone do me a favor and just go like you're saying so with me? Go ahead and try it, Maggie, just so everyone can hear. So. Right. So even before we get to any sort of a sound that the vocal cords are making, instead we're just blowing a bunch of air. So. So in order to be able to remember in order our three steps in order to be able to hit those higher notes we have to extend we need to uh, get the vocal cords to stretch we need to get them to close and we need to get the larynx to relax but instead we're getting trapped at number two because that the vocal cords are completely open do it one more time and just a little bit less s maggie just maybe even a tiny bit of zzz, like so put your hands in my hair like sing the line yeah, yeah, okay. but almost with a z Zo. versus a s. So put your hands in my hair. Here's your pitch again. So put your hands in my hair. So put your hands in my hair. Right, right, right. Don't push up to that first one. So put your, so put your. Start right on it. So. Yep. Okay. So put your hands in my hair. That's the way right there. That's the way. Beautiful job. Do it one more time. By the way, I misheard that first pitch. It's actually a C5 versus a C sharp five. It's a blue note. So put your hands in my hair. I love it. I love your lift on the hair too. And you're still keeping it connected because rather than hair, you guys could probably see why hair would be a difficult word to sing as well, right? Um, because that H consonant is just blowing a lot of air. Hair. Beautiful job, Maggie. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been so much fun. Now, before we get to our grand prize, you guys have to remember this, and you can write this down too. Number one, it doesn't matter how high you can sing if it doesn't sound good. God, I wish that every one of my students got this uh, because I was seeing people who were like, oh, I can sing like five octaves and six octaves and stuff like that. It doesn't, people are like always like, oh, I can sing from an E1 up to an E7. Yeah, but how good does your E4 sound or your A4 sound? The notes that make up the, the first passage in the male and female voice, oftentimes making those guys sound great is the whole deal, which is really the whole point of why we're working on this this much vocal range is to make the stuff in the middle sound good. Does everyone get that? Does that make sense to everyone? I just want to make sure. Go ahead and put yes in the chat if that makes sense. Number two, you have to remember that when you're first starting, there will usually be a little bit of a strain when you beginning sing uh, when you begin singing notes that you're not used to. And number three, it's this is why it's so important to get feedback from a real vocal coach who has experience in helping people sing higher because if you're just pushing up to those top notes most of the time you're going to have one of two things happen number one you're going to strain or number two you're going to break or number three you might do both so let's go ahead and answer some questions i think we've a lot of we're a little bit over time um but i'll, I'll a lot like let's say like three minutes for to answer as many questions as as i can about vocal stuff and as john can about focus right stuff and then we'll uh we'll get right into the grand prize how does that feel for you john Sounds good. Sweet. Okay, great. 
everyone go ahead and uh, start putting your questions in the chat. John, I saw some earlier that were specifically about focus, right? Did you already see those? I didn't catch that actually. Okay, uh, I'm scrolling up to see if I can find it. It was something about like, uh, what's, the, what's the upper limit in terms of kilohertz that the, oh, you know what? I think this is probably a more pointed question that I saw. Someone asked, um, can you expect the same frequency response in the second gen Scarlet's as the third gen Scarlet's? That's a very good question. It should be very, very close, but I'm not, I have to, check, I have to reference back to the specs to be sure. I, we did make a lot of, we did make some improvements on the third gen um, units, so they may be slightly better uh, in that regard, but I, I would have to check the specs. We do have that online, so um, feel free to check that out in the manuals if you'd like. All right, good but stuff. it should be it should be very very close, um, very similar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same same great sound, just a For new sure. gen. And what I really really love is this new air mode that you guys have, um, especially with like the Sure mic that I'm using right now. It just picks up so much of the spectrum. Uh, Matt Kane asked, what is the goal for the larynx? The goal for the larynx is to keep the larynx resting. No matter what you're singing, no matter where you're singing, you want it to be kind of in one place. Now, this is an ideal rather than a reality. And what I mean by that is most people's larynx are going to rise up when they sing higher notes, and it's going to lower when they sing lower notes. Um, so in other words, the larynx tends to chase the note that you're singing. However, the goal of most of this mixed voice training is to keep everything at a quote unquote kind of speech level, relaxed, uh, kind of a sound, and, uh, and the larynx raises up as you go up. Um, why does our voice sound different on recordings? Oh, wow, that is such a great question, Princess. It's because we're not really hearing ourselves the same way that, uh, that the rest of the world is. And actually reconciling the difference between those two sounds is really, really important. Um, can you summarize again how to relax the vocal cords when singing high? Um, generally speaking, there's a couple of things that might happen. If someone's singing too breathy in the top part of their voice, or they're breaking and straining when they're going up to the, the higher notes in their voice, generally it's because one of two things are happening. Number one, they might be backing off too much. Uh, or they might be pushing in too much. Uh, and they're, either way, you're going to have some of that strain or some of that breakiness that happens in the top part of the voice. So figuring out which of those two is the case for you, and obviously a vocal coach will be able to hear this and tell you immediately, um, which is why you want to be taking voice lessons. But figuring out which of those two reasons that it is will help you attain that goal. Uh, gosh, we're a little bit over time, so I think we have to uh, just uh, let those questions go for right now. Um, by the way, I've got a million articles and a fantastic uh, YouTube channel that's answering like all of these questions. People are asking about whistle register, compression, distortion, different vowels. You can find it all on my YouTube channel, Ramsey Voice Studio. So I think it's time we give away our grand prize. How do you feel about that, John? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Okay, great. So just a reminder, we are giving away lifetime access to the Master Your Voice singing course, which provides personal feedback in addition to a proven system of exercises. It's the only singing course like that out there. And we're also giving away this amazing, like seriously, gobsmacking array of musical equipment. John, you want to just like give them the bullet points real quick? Yeah, sure. So we have the Focusrite Scarlet uh, 8i6. That's going to be the, the kind of brain for your studio. Um, we have the Shure SM7B microphone, which is a, a industry standard dynamic mic. Uh, pairs great with the Scarlet. And then we have the Cloud Lifter in there as well, which is going to give you a little bit of an extra boost for that dynamic mic uh, for those quieter parts. And so all together, you have a really great front end with a great mic um, going into a, a really great preamp on the Scarlet and then adding the Cloud Lifter as well. It's a, it's a really great package. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. So let's uh, do it. Um, I'm going to be checking my private chat. Oh, uh, oh my goodness there gracious. We have a winner, <laughs> Teresa Reynolds from Washington, D.C. Teresa, you have to be here on the live stream in order to technically win. So go ahead and just put something in the chat letting us know that you've won. Teresa Reynolds from Washington, D.C. <laughs> we did this last time, and we had to go through like two or three other winners. So... 
I haven't seen anything from Teresa just yet. So we'll give her like another second or two to claim her prize. This would this would be a terrible time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, I don't see anything from Teresa Reynolds of Washington, D.C. Okay, let's let's move on to uh, our next winner. Oh, we've got Victoria Grider from here in Texas. Victoria, are you here? <laughs> we learned from our mistake last time that we have to pick, like, a couple winners. <laughs> Victoria Grider, are you here? Man, this is a lesson to stay until the end, guys. And everyone out there is just like quietly rooting for Victoria to not be here. <laughs> Victoria, I hope that you're here. <clears throat> okay, nothing from Victoria just yet. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'm going to give her just a couple more seconds, and then I think we have to f to f go to to the Plan C. <laughs> okay, Victoria Kreider. All right, here it is, our third winner, John Pellegrinelli. Another Italian. Like Another me. John from New Jersey. I'm from New <laughs> Jersey as well. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, people are asking, are all the winners U.S.-based? Absolutely not. We actually, in the last one, we shipped um, the whole package out to the United Arab Emirates. So uh, borders are no issue for us. Let's see. John Pellegrinelli, are you here? You know, I think that this is just probably a good... Uh, a good revelation at how good YouTube is at distracting you. People watch like this and then they're like, oh, I'll click on that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John Pellegrinelli, are you here? All right, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> 200 draws to go and I might win. That's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, we already did John. Let's see. Can we move on to the next one? Oh, I just got a message that Terry Turner is actually in the chat. Um, Terry, can you go ahead? Oh, it says Terry Ter Teresa Reynolds is me. Okay, so uh, we just had a difference in the Skype name or the uh, YouTube name versus the actual uh, contestant name. So, um, Terry, I'm going to let you go ahead and get connected with Dan for right now. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and sign off and say that this has been absolutely amazing. Uh, Terry, go ahead and get in touch with Dan at Focusrite to claim your prize. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out uh, my website, RamseyVoice.com, uh, my YouTube channel here at Ramsey Voice Studio, and you can check out Focusrite's uh, stuff at We Are Focusrite on Twitter and Instagram and at Focusrite on Facebook. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you later. Bye.